There we go. Hello, friends. I hope you're doing well. It's, things have changed a lot since I last saw you. If you look around my house, my Christmas tree is no longer up, which the cats are upset about because they really like the tree. All the decorations are gone. So Christmas is over and New Year's is over. We're in 2021 now. And now we're in the season of Epiphany. Um, yesterday was Epiphany, which is when the three kings came to visit Jesus and his parents. And they brought him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And the word Epiphany is a long, old-fashioned word that means unveiling. So the Magi were not Jews. They were Persian, and they're not sure what religion they, they believed in. They have some guesses, but they definitely weren't Jews. So this was the time when Jesus was shown to the rest of the world. It began to be a clue as to his identity, who he was. He wasn't just coming for the good of the Jews. He was coming for the good of all of us. So we're in the season of Epiphany. And today we're talking about water. Now water is very important in the creation story and then later on in the story of Jesus' baptism. Now, if we look at the front of our leaflet, we see this and it's kind of shapeless. We're not quite sure what this is. And it doesn't really have any definite place or time or anything. So another word for this is chaos. So when God began to create everything, it was just kind of like this. It was all jumbled up in chaos. And then God started to put God's fingerprints on it. So I've got a little bowl of water here. So as I tell you the story of how things were created, I'm going to use the water to put my fingerprint. And that kind of represents that God's fingerprints, God's creative energy is all over the planet. So in the beginning, the earth was formless and desolate, which basically means it was chaos. There weren't any, there wasn't any land, there wasn't any sea, um, there really wasn't a whole lot of anything. So the first thing we hear is that the Holy Spirit was moving over the waters. So even before anything was created, the Holy Spirit was there. So the first thing God said was, let there be light, and light appeared. And God was really happy about that, and he separated light from darkness, so kind of day and night, and that was day one. Then on day two, he said, let there be a dome that will divide the water, and it'll keep it in two separate places. So that was the sky, because there was water underneath the sky and all the oceans and the lakes and the rivers, and the water above the sky, kind of in the clouds that rain down and gives nature a good drink. So that was day two. Now day three, he kind of gathered up the whole, all the waters that covered the world and he, put, he organized them into oceans and lakes and rivers and between them there was land. So God created land and he said, I want the land to produce all kinds of plants, all kinds of grain, fruit trees, everything good and pleasing to eat and to look at. So God was very happy with that, and he called it a day, the third day. Now, day four, he said, let's have some lights up in the sky, because there was just this whole big dome of sky with nothing in it. So God said, hmm, let's have a light that'll give light to the earth. And boom, there was the sun. And he said, okay, when the sun is gone and it's nighttime, we still need some light to be able to see. So he said, let's throw the moon up there. And he said, and how about if we sprinkle a few stars up there? So the sky was filled with lights, with the moon and the stars and the sun. So that was the fourth day. It was another very good day, God thought. Okay, now day five. He said, let's have some people, so some things I should say, that are going to live on the earth. And God said, we're going to produce things that will live not only on the earth, but in the sea. And so, voila, God produced animals. Got all kinds there. We've got an elephant and a giraffe, a camel. We got several kinds of birds, a whale, and all kinds of fishes. So God filled the earth with all kinds of animals. 
And he thought, that's really good. And I thought, you know, I really need somebody to partner with me in this, who's going to take care of this wonderful planet that I've made. And so God created humans. Last of all, we, some would, I would like to believe he saved the best for last. And I think God did, though some days it doesn't look like that. So God said, everything that lives in the water, everything that lives on land, you belongs to you and you belong to it. I've given you all these green things to eat, all the plants. I've given you this water to drink. I've put you in this beautiful garden so that you and your descendants, everyone who comes after you, your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, will all have a wonderful place to live and to take care of for me. It's my gift to you. And God thought, I have really done a great job here. And that was the sixth day. And the seventh day, God rested. And that's why we rest on Sunday. We call that the Sabbath. It's our day of rest. So water was very important in the creation story. Without water, uh, the fish wouldn't have a place to live. Without water, we wouldn't have anything to drink. Without water, um, the, the land, the, the plants, all the crops wouldn't be able to grow. So water is very, very important. Water is life, they say. Um, we can live without food for, I think I've read about 30 days, but we can't live with water, something liquid, whether it's water or pop or, or whatever. We can't live with that for more than a couple of days. So that's how important water is to life. So when you look at this, think about your favorite animals. I love elephants. I think elephants are very smart and they're very gentle. They're just about my favorite animal. Um, and I love how they build, they form a community together. If you read about animals, community is very important to them. Um, they all take care of each other and take care of any babies that come along. So animals are my real favorite. So I'd like you to look at your flyer and circle the animals that are important to you. And maybe your favorite isn't on there and you can draw a picture of your favorite on there. And think about why they're your favorite. And thank God for that. Like I would say, dear God, thank you for making elephants. They're so big, but they're so gentle. And they teach us what it's like to take care of each other and to live in community together. So I thank you, God, for elephants. And then, of course, we can say thank you, God, for water. It gives us life. And without it, we wouldn't be able to live. So thank you very much for the gift of water. Because all these things, all of this creation is God's gift to us to care for and to use, but to use wisely. Um, that's why we try and keep the earth clean. That's why we try and save water and energy. Because we want to show God our appreciation for the gifts. So we go forward a few thousand years. And we've got Jesus. We studied his birth at Christmas time. We celebrated that. And at Epiphany, we talked about him being shown to the rest of the world. And we don't know a whole lot about what happened while he was a baby and a little boy. But this year, we're studying Mark's gospel. Now, in some of the gospels, we have the uh, story of Jesus' birth. We've got that in Matthew's gospel and in Luke's gospel. That's how we know about Christmas. But Mark's gospel is a little different. Mark kind of gets right down to business, and he starts with, with Jesus being an adult and ready to begin his ministry. So there was a prophet, and here's a picture, called John the Baptist. And if you look at John, he's kind of a wild guy. You know, he's got a long, long hair and a beard, and he wears rough clothes. And John lived out in the desert. Sometimes there were holy people in the Bible who went out to the desert because they could be alone with God, and there wasn't a lot to distract them. You know, there wasn't a lot of water, there wasn't a lot of comforts, and, and that would help them really focus on their prayer and really be able to listen to God. So that is what John did. And then John came back, and he started telling people that they needed to repent. Now, repent means turn in another direction. 
So he wanted them to turn away from the life they were living and turn in the direction of the Messiah, the chosen one who he said was coming. And what he did is he would baptize the people. And this was a symbol of their wanting to repent, to turn in another direction. So one day, John was at the Jordan River baptizing when here comes Jesus. And John just looked at him and John said, why are you here? And Jesus said, well, I want to be baptized. And John said, shouldn't I be baptized by you? And Jesus said, no, I need to be baptized to do things properly. Just like creation was orderly, Jesus wanted his, to be baptized as all believers were at that time and still are. So John baptized Jesus and then all of a sudden the dove appeared. Now the Holy Spirit is often uh, looks like a dove. And so that meant the Holy Spirit was here. And a voice came from heaven that not everyone could hear, that John and Jesus heard that said, this is my beloved son, listen to him. So even before Jesus started his ministry, before he did anything, God claimed him as his son and told John who, who had, and who would tell others to listen to him. So what he did was he called Jesus for ministry. And that's the same thing that happens to us when we're baptized. Now, when we're baptized, we're tiny little babies. So we're not just yet old enough to choose our ministry. But as we get older and we come to church and we go to school, we learn more about service. We learn more about what we're good at. And we start to learn what God may be calling us to do. And no matter how old you are, you can be called to service. Um, you're never too young or too old for it. Uh, the simplest things, holding a door open for someone, um, helping someone who's struggling with a heavy load. So many things. Excuse me, I have to go answer the phone. <laughs> I'm recording my Sunday school lesson, so I'm going to let you go. <laughs> All right, dear, you have a good night. I'll see you in the morning. Bye-bye. Okay. I am back. That was my husband. He works midnight, so I always like for him to call me when he gets to work, so I know he's there. This makes me feel better. So anyway, as I was saying, no one is ever too young or ever too old to serve. And that's really good news. When we're baptized, and most of us were when we were little babies, um, so we don't remember it, but we remember that God made promises to us, and um, he gave us to our parents, to our godparents, to our churches, so that they could help us begin to learn and live out those promises. And as you get older, um, you'll be confirmed and you'll make those promises for yourself. Uh, it's, it's almost like a, not being baptized for a second time. It's kind of like claiming your baptism, saying, I agree, I make my own promises now. I'm old enough to make my own choices. So that's a, that'll be a very important time in your life. So let's remember water. Water gives life, whether it's life to the world and everything in it, or whether it's the waters of baptism, where God's word, God's promises are spoken over us along with the water, and we belong to God, and we're chosen, and we're set apart for ministry, just like Jesus was. And that's really cool. So thank you so much. Have a good week and I'll talk to you again soon.